Hi, my name is Shani Ferguson. Question for the day is, where is the safest place on earth for a Jew today? This was a question that an Israeli journalist was asked who was in London. And today there was protests all over London. There's been violence around the world. And there's violence in Israel. And he really couldn't answer that because we always used to say Israel's the safest place because we have the right to defend ourselves here. We'll get there. But in the meantime, the world is not a safe place for Jews. How you respond and how you process the Jewish people says a lot about who you are. Because last night, 500 Palestinian Arabs are said to have been killed when a rocket hit a hospital in Gaza. Was it Israel's fault? Was it Hamas's fault or some other terror organization in Gaza? I have to say my first guess was that it was a terrorist organization because their rockets are often homemade. I don't know how to aim. And so they often malfunction. And just in this round, 450 rockets have hit Gaza by Gazans. However, my first reaction, my first thought, was not whose fault it was. It was a deep sigh because the question is, what will it take for Palestinians in Gaza to be free from their completely incompetent leadership? And what will it take for Gaza to be free Hamas and Islamic Jihad and all these other minor, minor terror organizations? You know why you never hear about Israelis accidentally bombing their own civilians? Because Israelis don't fire from downtown Tel Aviv or downtown Jerusalem. They fire from out in the middle of nowhere, in a field, in, in the middle of the desert. And so what happens last night is nobody knows. And that's really the first thing that happens whenever there's an event and nobody knows, we don't jump to conclusions, especially if we have the power of the media. But instead, these people sit in the media and they guess on the air and they set off riots. And so there was riots all around the world today, including in Jordan near the Israeli embassy, and people are rioting about something that Israel didn't even do. Biden arrived in Israel today, and if you think the riots were spontaneous, you'd be wrong, because these organizations that have these things planned out, and they just wait for opportunities like this to mobilize, to delegitimize Israel, and create this chaotic narrative around the reason that Israel should not exist. Biden did arrive in Israel and showed an astounding amount of solidarity, considering the lack of solidarity that we've had before this war broke out. And speaking of solidarity, one of the bittersweet things that has happened in this war has been the unifying factor. And there are several thousand yeshiva students, if you know anything about the, the background of uh, ortho, ultra-Orthodox Jews is that they don't want to serve in the military. They say that their Torah study is their service to the country and that their uh, yeshiva students should not have to serve in the military. They refuse to go. Now, some do go, but the vast majority of them do not. Now, what has happened with this war is that yeshiva students saw what happened and they literally called up the IDF and say, said, we we want to participate. We will be traumatized if we sit back and watch our nation be butchered like this and not do anything. That has been a dramatic change in attitude from the ultra-Orthodox community, which generally has been, you know, the non-religious people can go fight and we study Torah and that's how it should be. That's number one. And the other thing that was really fun to watch because only our country could get away with this is when LL Airlines had a flight from Bangkok and there was all these Israelis that had been backpacking uh, and they were called up to service. And so they're waiting for the flights. The flight was full and El Al just had everyone, every seat filled. And then they filled the aisles and people just filled the kitchen everywhere. There was floor space. People just slept all over the plane. And that is just something that makes our country amazing. Because if you guys remember another war that broke out a while ago um, and other wars that break out, the countries have to close the borders because people are fleeing to get out. Um, and in Israel, people are running back to serve and running back to be a part of what we understand is our fight for survival. The question is, what does Israelis understand about their country that other people don't understand about theirs? 
In the meantime, we're busy running around the country getting supplies and aid and equipment to those who are affected by the war. There's some 300,000 Israeli refugees spread out around the country. The needs are enormous. The outpouring that we have received from outside the country has been overwhelming. Thank you so much. The emails, the prayers, reaching out to us, the giving has been incredible. Just wow. And if you haven't had a chance to give and you want to give, you can go to israelneedsme.com. You can see our financial accountability and integrity links there. Thank you so much for giving. We are so excited for you to be with us on the winning side. Until next time, I'm Jenny Ferguson.